Hello everybody. What I'm going to do today is go over the Zen Tour and setting that up in Studio One Three Professional so you can record your instruments without hearing the metronome but also at the same time recording the instrument to receive the onboard effects within the antelope interface as well as the aura verb that comes with the Zentor and typically that would be found right here in the, the mixer uh, you can select your uh, reverb effect that you want to apply and then also in the effects window you can obviously uh, select from various different effects that uh, your antelope device comes with. Now this, these should all be the same. Um, uh, the Zen Tour, the Zen Studio, uh, and even the uh, Orion uh, devices should all typically be the same uh, as far as the interface is concerned. And as far as the concept behind connecting this to whatever DAW that you're using, in my case it's going to be Studio 1.3, the same concept should apply no matter if you're using Cubase, if you're using Pro Tools, Logic, or Reaper. Um, just in my case I'm going to be using Studio 1.3. Now, I followed some instructions online from uh, Antelope, and uh, they weren't that great. In fact, uh, it, it, I was only halfway there with, you know, what they showed to do, and it included using a, a plug-in um, on each track where you would have to route the audio out of your DAW through your Zentor Antelope device and then back in to your DAW for recording and that's the only way that you can apply you know whatever effect that was on that track as well as the aura verb well I found something that's a lot simpler and that I use and I'm gonna show you how to set that up today so I actually have a template and I'll post a, a downloadable link in, in uh, below the video that you can utilize for downloading yourself and, and putting it in the proper place and then loading that up if you want to use it or you can just set it up yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and load that up now. I have a few in here. Alright, so the first thing you'll notice here is I did some uh, arranging uh, and I actually did some naming so I have a, a pretty solid naming convention going on here and the purpose is you know you want to try to stay as arranged and efficient as possible so that way you're not confusing yourself because uh, doing this routing can can sometimes get confusing especially if you're you know a little bit more involved now I only have one external instrument and that's my Korg Kronos 88 and uh, there's just no instrument out there that even comes remotely close to the sounds that I get out of you know uh, what I call the holy grail of, of sounds in a keyboard um, but then again I have never heard any plugins or software uh, uh, VSTs sound as good as the aura verb or some of the onboard effects that are truly analog uh, that come out of uh, the Zentor or any of the antelope devices so in combination um, you know I'd rather use my Kronos for recording and the Zentor onboard effects and reverb for all of the processing and not only that I'm saving resources on my computer so but anyway uh, let's take a look at what I did here so my preamp which is going to be my line ins uh, to, on the back as you can see this says rear panel um, 
on the back of my Zentor on channel 5 and 6, uh, I have a line in. So I basically just link these two together and I increase the decibel of, you know, uh, the sound coming in. Um, just to, you know, make the sound a little bit more powerful, uh, louder. And then since that's coming in on 5 and 6, I look at my preamp area and then obviously I rename it, you know, Kronos. Kronos left, Kronos right. You'll see right here. The next thing that I did was I took USB Play 1 and 2 and I named them SO for Studio 1 left, Studio 1 right. And you'll see the reasoning behind me doing that for USB Play. Uh, when we get into Studio One. And then obviously for the Mix One left and right, I did Studio One left, Studio One right. And then the most important part that we don't want to forget is our AFX out for the effects that we're going to be uh, adding to the sounds coming in from the Kronos. So we're going to want to use uh, these effects to process on top of the sounds coming in and then obviously to record them. Okay, now comes the complicated. This is the easy part of just understanding what we have coming in, where we're applying, uh, you know, the effects to uh, our USB play and then obviously the mixing. That That's easy to understand until we get down to the two part. So this is from, this is two. So what I did is I went through just because all of the colors kind of threw me off and made things a little more complicated than what they should be. So you can just, you know, r right click and just say mute entire row. Now, if I were you, I would just go through and do it anyway to all of them, mute row and just have it all gray because you're going to start from scratch anyway. So, um, so I'm going to start off muting this row and then muting this row because I'm going to show you how I, how I did this. So basically I took the Kronos from the preamp section and then I dropped that down into the uh, effects in section, right? Once I have it in the effects in section, I obviously need a place to uh, put that out, right? So that would be my mix channel one. So that's when I take the effects out because think about it. You have the chronos coming in or two, the effects in. So this is, a, you know, where the effects are going to be applied to these sounds. So from the preamp in to the effects in, and then obviously we need some way of outputting the effects, right? So I take the Kronos effects out on 5 and 6, which this would be 5 and 6, 5 and 6, 5 and 6. And then I apply them to the mix channel 1, right? Now, for USB recording, obviously, I'm going to go ahead and mute this whole row. And you're going to want to bring down your mix one left and right which would be our naming convention studio one left and right drop that down to usb record one and two now you can put these wherever you want in this entire row okay um if you want you can just keep dropping them down right there and and just kind of traverse your way down to the end here to where you have your entire row filled up with mix one left and right unless you have other ends that you want to use that that you're using for mixing and you want to apply them in this row you can do that as well and the same applies for your instruments if you have other instruments that you're looking to record you can drop them down into the effects in from your preamp area and then do the same thing as far as applying the effects out and adding them directly underneath uh, your instrument. Anyway, so I only have one setup 
for USB record one and two and that would be for studio one left and right and the reason why is because I only have one instrument which is my Kronos so I'm only gonna have one track enabled and recording at a single time so I'm not gonna have multiple tracks recording at a time so to save myself uh, uh, I guess lines or I can even call it resources on my Zentor as well as my machine I'm good with just having uh, one USB record on it on a single mix left and right now for USB play because this is where we're going to allow the playback of what we're recording we're gonna want to monitor that so for USB play one and two I'm gonna go ahead and mute this row mute this row mute this row and mute this row really the important part here is just bringing this down to monitor and then also for your headphones as well now if you don't want line out or headphone to that's fine I mean you can keep it like this it's that simple I mean looking at this is in its simplest form here and you don't have to get complicated with it but in any sense I'm gonna just highlight over to 8 by pressing shift and then clicking on 8 I'm just gonna bring this down and drop it there just in case you know maybe I have someone recording vocals or uh, you know I need some additional uh, USB play in here I, I can certainly do that and I'm gonna drop this down to headphone too so but mainly I'm just gonna be working with uh, studio one left studio one right studio one left for my mixing and studio one right for my mixing and obviously my instrument here with uh, the effects processing now this setup right here will give you the onboard effects plus the aura verb now that is all contingent on how you have studio one three set up so let's take a look at what we got going on in there so moving over to studio one three and I hope that this is uh, you know understanding for you guys and I'm not over complicating you know the easiness of this this is just loading up on my other screen I'm gonna have to bring it over okay Let me just drop this over here and I created a template for this and the reason why is because uh, I don't want to have to set this up every single time that I you know come into studio one three so I create my template with everything in place so that way I just come in I can start recording from my Kronos and I'm good to go um, and also just so you know if you guys are having trouble switching your sample rate uh, just ensure that you match up uh, you know the buffer size that's on your uh, antelope device to what's being uh, portrayed in your studio one environment or what it's set to in here uh, it's not going to be on this page but it's within the sound settings but I'm going to go ahead and select my uh, template and I'm also using a PreSonus fader port 8 so uh, if you see faders and sliders and knobs moving that uh, it's most likely because I'm controlling it from the fader port okay so what I did here was I set up a template uh, I have 16 tracks all audio stereo and um, obviously change the color on these guys um, but you, you know one of the biggest issues that I had was if I recorded with metronome then the the way that antelope describes and wants you to do this the issue you get is that you record the metronome with your instrument and then you have to use the plugin as well uh, 
you know, to even get the routing correct. Well, the way I'm going to show you here is you're going to be able to get around all that. So if I look at my uh, first track here, uh, I have 16 tracks, and I have four effects tracks, and then I have two effects tracks that are going to be used for routing, you know, uh, effects one and two to main out one, and then effects three and four to main out two, which these guys are then routed out to the main. So you guys don't have to set up these effects channels if you don't need them. I have them there just for my own purposes and uh, for adding effects across a wide array of my uh, sounds. All right, so I'm going to right click on input one, go to audio IO setup, okay? Now you're going to see a, a, a pretty interesting window here. For you guys, you're probably only going to see input left and input right. What you need to do is, let me see if I can, can I remove these? Let me cancel. Okay. I don't know why these are here on sub 12. Maybe I went one too deep. Let me remove that. Okay. What you need to do is because on uh, our antelope device we have main for one and two that's for out okay now when we take a look at our antelope device our out is going to be monitor and headphone one and line out okay so we have studio one left and right coming from usb play applied to these three regions okay and that's going to be our our output of one and two now the rest of these subs, sub 1 through sub 11, are going to be in place for specifically recording purposes of your instruments and effects. You don't have to go this deep if you don't want to. Um, I did it just in case I start adding additional instruments or I have people plugging into the Zentor. Uh, you know, set it and forget it. Um, set it in a template, open it up, and you don't really have anything else to worry about. You can just plug and play. Um, but what you would do, I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of these. Just for the sake of the tutorial. Is you're just going to add stereo. And then you're just going to keep clicking, add stereo, add stereo, add stereo, all the way up until you get to your 24 out, um, left and right. And then that's it. Uh, whoops, let me come back here, apply that. After you apply it, and then it, it'll turn from a uh, sort of a grayed out state to a, uh, a brighter contrasty state. Um, and then you would do the same for output. Now, we're not doing left and right because left and right would be more of like, I guess, mono. Uh, since we're stereo, we're going to do left and right side by side. So you're, the, the first two of input left and right are going to be uh, very different than the rest of your inputs. So you're going to do the same thing as you did in output. You're going to just add stereo and keep you know, adding until you get to your in 24 and then you're just going to say apply and say OK. It's that simple. Now what you need to do on all your tracks is just apply input 1 as the source for your input, which is going to be the instrument you're recording. Now if you have multiple instruments, you're going to select input 1 here, maybe input 2 and 3 there, or 3 and 4 there, uh, 5 and 6, you know, if you have drums or uh, other instruments. But for me, I'm just going to go through each track individually as I play and record the sounds individually. So I don't have to worry about enabling multiple track recording when I have one instrument that I'm going to be recording at a single given time. And then obviously the last part is you're going to want to make sure that your output on your main is, for, is set for 1 and 2. Now when we look at input, 
recording input on one and two versus main one and two when we come into our routing we're going to see that usb record is set and enabled for mixing left and right on one and two that's going to be our input that's the input we selected on the track and then output which is the main on uh, the main track is going to be coming from monitor headphone one and line out so basically what we have going on here is the record is coming in from the chronos for into the effects input and then it's going to the mix channel where it's picking up the reverb so it's picking up the effects here here it's picking up the aura verb and then it's going out through USB record so it's processing here and then out and our out is going back into our DAW because we have USB record in on line one and two and then we have out on line one and two which is going to be monitor studio one out left and right so it's basically looping here you can see it doing a big circle and that's the way our our routing is set up okay so hopefully that makes uh more sense to you guys all right now minimize that bring studio one back up here now I'm going to show you when I record on track one that we get those effects. But before I do that, let me let me explain how we're going to get around not using the metronome, okay? So I'm going to click the little wrench icon down here. Now, this is the way I have my metronome set up. Um, I don't need to do a pre-count on two bars. No, typically I would just to give myself some time for setting up and being comfortable in front of my instrument. Um, but what I typically do is do a pre-count. But as you can see, I'm looping here from 3 to 7, which still gives me my 4 bars. I mean, obviously, there's instances where I increase that to 8, but for a template, I just set it for 4. Um, repeat accent. And what I did was I rendered it. So what I... What I'm what I'm not doing is allowing the output of the metronome to go out of my Zentor back in through the Zentor into my DAW, uh, which is Studio One Three. And if I do that, then I get the metronome recorded into my sound, and that defeats the purpose of you know playing an instrument, right? So. What you do is you rent, you click on render, and you'll get an option. Here, let me show you the options. When you click render, it'll say timeline start to end or start to song end. And that's basically what I do, okay? Um, because you can always mute it. And I have it set up on, you know, the fader port where I can just easily hit mute or unmute. But having that rendered um, through that track. Uh, allows me to not have that sound recorded on the same track because it's on a separate track and playing and it's not recording I'm not actually getting the record of of the metronome but I do have it rendered here as audio through the entire song so that way I get my metronome and I don't have to have the metronome play every time it's already rendered and that way I can just start recording and still get my net metronome without it recording to my same track. And I'll show you how this works right now. So what I'm going to do is I already have something set up in, let's see, my mixing environment. I have everything set up correctly. And make sure your panning is correct since you're using stereo. Make sure you go... 30 left, 30 right. So that way you get equal panning if you need to pan your... Uh, if you need to start panning your uh, tracks in Studio One Three, if you let them sit at zero, um, you won't be able to do any kind of panning because it's uh, uh, stereo. So make sure you do your panning. All right, so I have Aura Verb on 
Um, I'm going to play something here. So as you can hear, it's pretty strong. Pretty strong. And I'm just going to select something more easy on the ears. I'm just going to do... Let's do a... Let's do a rock. So I have electric piano here. All right, and I also have in the effects, I'm going over to five and six now because that's where my line ins are. Um, I just applied the VMEQ, which does a pretty good job. So you can hear the differences. So just to show you that I am getting the effects. If I turn that off, sounds a little dry. But if I turn it on, it's going to have a little more energy to it. It's more flattened. All right. Yeah, so my mid-ranges pick up quite a bit. So if I go back to my mixer and then I enable that, and obviously I get... My reverb. Now let's go into Studio One Three, and let's record this. As you can see, I am getting input here. All right. So this is recording. Oh, uh, you know what? Let me turn that off. And let me unmute my metronome. I told you that earlier. So you hear my metronome going. It doesn't have the reverb added to it. So So uh, did I just hit stop on that? I did. Sorry about that. Let me do this again. So now I got something recorded down and I want to hear it play back. So I'm going to just hit play here. And oh, first I'm going to want to mute my... Metronome. You got to make sure you do that on playback. So you can hear the R reverb going. And I'm probably I'm probably picking up extra reverb by having that on, so I'm gonna turn that off and then play it back. As you can see, because we're only line in, we're not seeing anything play here, right? but we do see it on our main out. So we are getting our reverb and other effects applied there. Now if we went down to track two, which I have all of these set to input one and two, if I come down there and disable recording on track one and go to track two, I will go ahead and re-enable my metronome. And I'm just going to hit recording from right here. And what I'm also going to do is bring this onto my other screen because I want to do two recordings of one with the reverb and one without. So now, let's bring this back over. I'm going to turn reverb off. I'm going to, my first track is muted. 
bring this back a little bit and I'm just going to hit play. Now we see that reverb is off so we're not going to get any processing through uh, tracking on the Zen Tour. So if I hit play you're going to hear dry first as we record and then halfway through I enable the Aura verb which is then what we'll get through real-time processing. Uh, let me turn off metronome. All right. Let me go back. So it's dry. And then it'll pick up. There we go. But as you see, everything's only being processed on the out. And then obviously you can convert that to audio, hit control B, and then, you know, you're good after you do all your editing, but I'm just gonna do a control Z there. All right, so that's that's basically how easy it is to set up Studio One Three with your Zentor or any other Antelope device that you're using for real-time processing and recording of your instrument into your your DAW. Uh, just to recap, uh, basically what we did in the routing table was we muted all the tracks, we created our line in, which is channel five and six on the back of our Zentor, that's where my uh, line ins are coming in uh, from my core chronos. I'm creating uh, or naming line five and six in as chronos, left and right. I then create my USB play, studio one left and right, for my effects out, I create a Kronos because I want my Kronos sound to have effects to them. And then my Mix 1 Studio 1, or Studio 1 left and right. So you're dropping down the Kronos from the preamp section into the effects section where we're going to apply the effects to the Kronos sound. And then from the effects out, we're going to add the effects out to the mix channel where we will then not only have the effects, but we're going to apply the aura verb to those effects of whatever you already added uh, from the effects in. And then that's going to come out into your USB record into your DAW. Your DAW is then going to come back out of monitor 1 and 2, Headphone 1 and 2, line out 1 and 2, which we have labeled as Studio 1 left and right. And then I created a template within Studio 1 to have outputs 1 and 2 all the way to 23 and 24, depending on you know how you're doing your recording. I mean, if you just wanted to have 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, that's fine. But it's better to be prepared. And then obviously for input one, left and right, all the way down to input 23 and 24, left and right. Just add that, say OK. Depending on where you're doing a recording from, uh, just select input one and two. Uh, that's where my Kronos is being set up to record from, which is USB record one and two. and then output one and two. And then however else you wanna do your setup, you're, you're good to go. Please leave feedback. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll do my best to give you answers. It took me uh, a long time to figure out this simplistic way of not recording metronome into my DAW. Um, but then again, you know, you do, if you want the metronome, have to render it to its own specific track and enable it. Uh, so that way you get your metronome during recording, uh, but at the same time, you don't have to have it during playback as long as you mute it. For me, it's simple. It works. 
and uh, hopefully you find this video helpful even if you use bits and pieces to create your own method. Take care everybody.